LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. Everybody thinks you can only get sponsored. That's like the most popular one, but that's the hardest one. Obviously, you can sell your own products. You can be an affiliate, but there are some other things you can do. You can do product mentions where for me, I'm doing this right now with my new book, The Business of Podcasting, where I'm paying podcasters to mention my book on their show a certain amount of times. Super simple. I want them to get the book, read it, and then mention it on the show. Three times is a minimum, and then I pay them for that, right? If you're a podcaster and you make no money from your show, I'm pretty sure you'll take 20 to 30 bucks to talk about a book, right? Like, it's kind of a no-brainer. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Winfluence is not a podcast about podcasts. There are plenty of those out there. I listen to two or three a week to keep myself informed about the tips and tricks, the ideas and innovations in the space. There are far more qualified people out there sharing that type of content specific to the genre. Podcasts, however, are content creations of content creators who leverage those mechanisms to build audiences and influence. And so they fall squarely in the crosshairs of what we need to know and explore on this show. I've said before, owned content mechanisms like blogs and podcasts, email newsletters and the like are an important category of creation influencers everywhere need to pay attention to. Today, we're going to hammer that home a bit. One of the podcasts about podcasting I listen to is The Business of Podcasting. Christopher Hines, or The Coach Chris, as he is known online, offers up short, informal, but informational riffs on how to leverage podcasts to make money, drive value for your business, and more. He mixes in an occasional guest and is just useful for new and emerging podcasters. Chris is also the man behind the personal branding playbook. Both shows are on the Marketing Podcast Network, which I run and Winfluence is a part of as well. Being exposed to Chris's wisdom and straightforward coaching ideas compelled me to have him come on the show and share a bit of his knowledge with you too. Today, we'll talk about why you content creators need to consider podcasting, who may not need to, and then we'll dive into the ways you can make money from your podcast. Lots of useful information and advice from the coach Chris, Christopher Hines, coming up on Winfluence. Now, the way I'm able to bring you Chris and all the other guests we have here on Winfluence to you each week is with Zencaster. I've used it for quality audio recording over the internet for years now. Zencaster bills itself as an all in one podcast production suite that gives you studio quality audio and video without needing all the technical know-how, and that is absolutely true. Here's why Zencaster works so well. You folks considering a podcast or doing one but having some issues recording guests and whatnot, pay attention to this. Zencaster records each guest locally. The audio and or video file is saved to the guest's computer. Your version, obviously, is saved to your computer. Zencaster then uploads the crystal clear audio and video right into a cloud folder and the Zencaster suite so you have high quality raw materials to work with. Your recording is awesome because it's on your machine. Theirs is too because it's saved on their machine with local settings, then uploaded so you can get to it. 
Stop recording one track in Zoom and other softwares. Do it the professional way, like we do here on Winfluence. And as a listener of this show, you get 30% off a pro account. There's also a free trial, so you can test before you commit. Just go to zen.ai slash Winfluence. That's Z-E-N dot A-I slash Winfluence. Take your podcast recordings, video, and audio to the next level. Sound good, just like me and our guests. Zen.ai slash Winfluence. And if you're wondering how I keep all my work organized for this podcast and all the influence marketing strategy work I'm doing for clients out there, that's easy. Basecamp. I lost track of how long I've been using it for project management and team communications. It's been around for 18 years, so that's about how long I've been using it. Basecamp is all about simplicity. It's designed to give you and your team the tools you need to get work done. Messages, to-dos, file storage, chat, calendars, and more. Bring all in one project management to your business with Basecamp. There's a 30-day free trial. You do not need a credit card to try it. Just go to jason.online slash Basecamp. That's jason.online slash Basecamp. And use the project management software they write about in books and stuff. It's great, really, seriously. Great software, Basecamp. Jason.online slash Basecamp is that URL. We're going to get smarter about podcasting, including how to monetize your podcast. Christopher Hines, the Coach Chris, is next on Winfluence. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Chris, every episode of your podcast is useful. Actually, every episode of both your shows, the personal branding playbook and the business of podcasting are. But the business of podcasting, I think, has been on fire of late. I've really enjoyed getting your insights about podcast monetization. And I want you to share some of that information with us today. But Before we dig into that, I'm really curious how Christopher Hines came to be the man who knows all this stuff. Take us back to your first efforts on podcasting and the social web front. How'd you get into this racket? Oh, man. I got invited onto a radio show once, like just a random radio show on sports Twitter. And this is back when Twitter was just starting and it was really picking up. And I had never done anything live or anything like that before. Up until that point, I hadn't done any type of content creation. This is like 2015, maybe. And it was a great experience, man. I had so much fun. We were talking for about an hour and a half and I didn't even realize it. That's how much fun I was having. <laughs> when I got off the live show, I went back to Twitter and people were like, oh my God, you sound great. This is amazing. What's your podcast? And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so that kind of led me into launching a show. And I got lucky because when I launched my first show, it was a basketball podcast. And I was like, man, really deep into the sports world. So I got to talk to some NBA players. And this is when I was living in LA. So it was just perfect. You know, it was a perfect kind of a perfect storm. And it was a really great experience because that's what got me interested. And I had a lot of fun early on. And that helped me learn a lot faster, too. I think it's easy to learn when you're also having fun Not while sure. doing it. So my first month podcasting went, went by like that. It was super fast. Talking to NBA players and retired veterans and stuff. But then one thing happened and made me almost quit. I almost quit. I had done a ton of interviews. I had like 10 interviews, like all of them hour each. On my old MacBook, it was like 10 years old. I should have been throwing it away. <laughs> One day I wake up and a computer doesn't turn oh, on. Wow. And I lost all that content. Oh. That is, whew. I learned a lot in the early days, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Don't we all? I think everybody's got a good, you know, computer fail story out there. So you started this NBA podcast, but then, I mean, eventually podcasting and advising people on podcasts became your business. So how did that sort of happen? 
Well, after doing it for so long, I realized that I could kind of help people with it. And I actually took, it was a two-year period where I was doing a lot of consulting completely free on Facebook and stuff or on Twitter. People would just hit me up and say, hey, I want to talk to you about my podcast. And I would just talk to them. And after talking to literally, I, I kept a list of people of over 100 people. I'm like, okay, now I can turn this into something. Because I hadn't even, I didn't realize that I could make it a business at that point. But after I put in so much work, I'm like, man, it's time for me to make this an actual company. That's when I went into production and I started learning more about monetization. And I was on the business side of it too, on one side where I was working with companies and they were bringing in big sponsors to pay all the podcasters on their platform. So I have a unique perspective because I've been the podcaster and the business that's trying to sponsor the podcast. Mm -hmm. So having operated on both sides gives me a really unique perspective. And for me, it was just... Just grinding it out, man. I actually think that's what most people should do if you want to be like this consultant or whatever. Once you talk to 50 people, that's when you can kind of really open the doors up a bit. You know, that's what really helped me is talking to 50 people. After 50, I realize I'm doing something yeah, special. That's true. Now, you've got two podcasts. Uh, both of them are on the Marketing Podcast Network, which is another proof point that you're super smart, in my opinion. But those are just your shows. I think you build shows for other clients as well. Give us some insight into your day-to-day -day work. Yeah, I do a lot of launches, not as many as I used to. Now I'm working with a lot more companies on launching shows and more of the SaaS space, like for startups and things like that, because podcasting is mainstream now. You know, it's becoming normal. So any kind of business can launch it and they can have users for their platform and customers buying their book or buying their merchandise. Like there's so many things you can do from a podcast. I also work with a lot of hosts one-on-one -on -one to work on monetizing because I think every episode for a podcast should be profitable. When we look at YouTube, YouTubers expect to make money from every video they mm -hmm. post. I want podcasters to have that same mindset. Yeah, We got to operate the same way. And once all of us collectively adopt that mindset, it will be inevitable for us all to get paid like That's that. Great. Now, I do want to get into the depths of the monetization. But before we go there, I want to talk a little bit about the people who listen to this podcast. The Winfluence audience includes a good number of influencers, content creators. But the lion's share of them, I think, are the Instagrammers, maybe the TikTokers, even some, some old school folks still doing Facebook and blogs. There's some YouTubers in the audience, too. But not many of them have made the expansion over to podcasting. I want you to talk to those folks and tell me and tell them why you think they might should consider a podcast. I think everybody should have one right now, man, just because it's the most popular form of media. Obviously, you can combine the audio and the video so you can be on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts at the same time. And one thing that people often overlook are the relationships you build when you have a podcast. I've talked to people that I would have never been in the same room with. They wouldn't know who I was. I, I literally got an email today because I emailed, I did an interview with Dame Maxwell like three years ago. Years ago on a personal brand and playbook. And somebody emailed me today like, hey, we want to pay you to promote this next book and do a review on your show. Stuff like that happens when you build relationships through podcasting. And the truth is, there's no other form of media where you can do that. Granted, it will take you some time to climb the ladder. But if you have a YouTube channel, it's going to be really hard to invite somebody, hey, come on my YouTube channel. It's not really the same. That's true. And if you if you're if there's somebody out there in your space in the vertical that you know that you're creating content around that you want to get to know, what more flattering thing to do than to say, hey, come on my show and let and be the star for an hour or half hour and let me talk to you. You know, placating people's ego is a big thing. It's a it's a great way to get your foot in the door. Oh yeah. And as a pro tip to that, one great thing you can do, and I do this all the time, if you want to interview somebody, people have their projects public. So go and see when that book is coming out, when they are launching that new course, when their new movie is coming out, their new album. I actually had a music podcast at one point in time where I talked to, you know, a lot of A-list artists. Like literally me and my co-host got invited to like listening parties in New York and stuff. That was one of my shows that we got sponsored before we put out one episode. <laughs> because we did a lot of groundwork and research and stuff. It was insane how fast that show was successful, you know? I didn't really love it that much, but it worked like that. So I think everybody should get into the podcasting space because, yeah, the money is there, but I think so many other things happen around it that the money is going to find you. Well, and the big reason for me is owning your own content. I mean, podcasts, blogs, email newsletters, that's content you own. 
and you can take it from place to place. If one hosting provider shuts down, you can move to another. You take your content with you. Social media content is technically yours, but it's living on somebody else's property. They turn off your account or screw with their algorithm a certain way, and now all of a sudden it's useless to you. So podcasts fit in that own content category. Yeah, man. I've seen so many people with big accounts, like Instagram specifically. People are always losing their accounts or getting hacked, or you have 50 other fake accounts pretending to be you. Somebody, it'll be hard for them to take my podcast and pretend to be my podcast. Like that's really difficult to do. I mean, I just think that if you want to build a real community, build any kind of brand, a podcast is just the best way to go right now. It's undefeated. Well, it's it's definitely a part of Chris's personal branding playbook for sure. And then certainly he helps people out with the monetization, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, you said a minute ago that you think everybody should be you know diving into the podcast realm right now. But I want to back up and ask that question a little bit differently. Who shouldn't podcast? Now, I have my own opinions on that, but I'd love to hear it from the evangelist himself here. Is there anyone out there who you would advise, eh, maybe podcasting isn't for you? You know, I think because everybody likes to talk about certain things, I actually do believe everybody should podcast. I think everybody has to do it in their own way. Like for me, I can't host a show anymore where I only do interviews. I can't. Because I want to go on my own solo rants and I want to talk about stuff and I kind of have to go off a bit. And I, it's hard to do that during an interview. So I think you got to find that balance. And if you have a show that's about something you're passionate about, you're going to love it. And I tell people that when you're launching a show, don't make it about making money or being a celebrity. Make it about something you care about. This is one thing that if, it's, you're, if you're not passionate, if you don't care about it, you're not going to last long because you're not going to make any money. It's going to take time to get to that point. Building a relationships won't be valuable to you. So I actually think everybody can do it, but everybody has to do it in their own way. Well, and if you go out there and look for whatever your topic of interest is, you're going to find somebody in the podcast world doing it. Now, they may only have 10 listeners, but they're probably doing it because they really love it. I used an example, and I've actually interviewed the gentleman before. There is a podcast, and I, I actually kind of got into it because I'm a writer by craft, and so... I really got into this, but it's the history of the English language. And this guy puts literally hours of research into how our language was formed. And when you start from episode one, he goes all the way back to like the days of the Druids and the tribes in Central Europe and how those languages and communications came about. It's just, it's fascinating stuff if you are a writer and like the English language. Yeah. But I mean, there, there's podcasts out there about every damn thing. Literally everything. I, I heard a show, I heard about a, a couple of shows in the Christian fishing area. <laughs> so not only Christian, but also fishing. That's very, very specific. And those shows make money. Wow. So it's it's just, I think the focus should be passion first, because I'm telling you, once the passion is there, then you got some formatting things, professionalism, stuff like that. But the money part, it'll work itself out. Trust me. I'm glad that you podcast and that I podcast. When we come back on Winfluence, I want to dive into how those of you who do podcast or want to can make money literally from every episode of your show and more. Christopher Hines is our guest. Stay tuned. Facebook is taking action to keep its platform safe. In the last six years, Facebook spent over $16 billion, enough to build seven pro stadiums, all to help create safer connections. Learn more about the work ahead at facebook.com forward slash action. Back on Winfluence with Christopher Hines. He is the coach Chris on the social networks, hosts a pair of super useful podcasts, the personal branding playbook and the business of podcasting, both of which are shows on the Marketing Podcast Network. Okay, Chris. So as we recorded this, the most recent episode of the Business of Podcasting was entitled, How Much Money Can Podcasters Make? I love the way that you flipped that question a bit because of how vague it is. So you reposition it a bit to how to make each episode profitable, which is slightly different. And I love the way you kind of dig into ways podcasters can monetize every episode of the show. So Take us through, spell those out for us. How can a podcaster monetize literally every episode of their show? All right. I love this question, man, because everybody thinks you can only get sponsored. That's like the most popular one, but that's the hardest one. Obviously, you can sell your own products. You can be an affiliate, but there are some other things you can do. You can do product mentions 
where for me, I'm doing this right now with my new book, The Business of Podcasting, where I'm paying podcasters to mention my book on their show a certain amount of times. Super simple. I want them to get the book, read it, and then mention it on the show. Three times is a minimum, and then I pay them for that, right? If you're a podcaster and you make no money from your show, I'm pretty sure you'd take 20 to 30 bucks to talk about a book, right? Like, it's kind of a no-brainer. And there are so many coaches and authors out there that would love that. Now, are you going to go and get a massive deal with some big corporation like that? Probably not. But this is for the podcasters that don't have 500 listeners an episode. If you're still under 1,000 downloads, this is where you start. You can also create segments on your show and have sponsors sponsor those segments. And by sponsors, I mean Instagram boutiques, those Shopify stores, the products you see promoted on TikTok. They're running ads. They're putting money into marketing already. They're probably going to market on podcasts at some point. Why not be with your show, right? I think we have to think outside of the box as podcasters because I mentioned YouTubers earlier. They have a sense of entitlement when it comes to making money because of Google AdSense as they should. And as podcasters, we can have that same entitlement, but it comes with creativity. So I think on every episode, you should have a product you're promoting as an affiliate. And with that one, just find tools that your audience uses. For me, I host a show about podcasting. I can talk about microphones, cameras, all kinds of software. I'll never run out of stuff to talk about. I'm actually working with GetResponse right now, an email marketing platform. There's so many options. So understand as a podcaster, your downloads don't matter. You can make every single episode profitable. And I would say this, like one example that the gentleman that we actually talked to on this show recently, Gary Arndt from Everything Everywhere, which is a massive podcast now. But one of the things that I really like that he did early on was he used an affiliate program with Audible for audiobooks because he's got a podcast audience. These are people who listen to audio. And his show has a different topic every day. Well, he can every day literally go find an Audible book that aligns with that subject matter. So his advertising, even though it's an affiliate thing, his advertising lines up with the topic of the show. Super smart to make mm -hmm. sure that message is relevant because the more relevant that affiliate ad is, the more conversions you're going to make. And for those of you who don't really realize, you can go to Audible and some Amazon, some of these other places, sign up as an affiliate. You can use a code or a link or whatnot on your website to send people to your page to get credit for that sale. And then, you know, for every 10 bucks, maybe you get 50 cents or maybe you get a dollar, whatever, but you're still making money from your podcast. Even though you don't have a whole lot of downloads, you hit that one person that that ad is relevant for. And then all of a sudden you're, you're profiting from what you're doing. So yeah. And that's how it starts. That's exactly how it starts. When you're an affiliate, one thing I always suggest too, is try to build a relationship with somebody in that company, because some of those companies that have affiliate programs are paying content creators as well. So you never know. They could be a sponsor for you down That's the road. True. That's very true. You know, one thing, Chris, I'm struggling with for the Marketing Podcast Network, talk a little shop here, but I think people will appreciate the conversation, is that programmatic advertising is where the sponsor sends us a pre-produced commercial. I can plug that into the system and it just airs on all the different shows on the network when I tell it to. But the in-show host read ads, like the ones that I did in this episode for Zencaster and Basecamp, for those of you listening, remember that from a few minutes ago, those are more valuable because A, the host is sharing the message personally, hopefully making it very authentic to them. But B, they're also baked into the fabric of the show. You can even make them seem like part of an organic conversation. So they're not a jarring difference from the rest of the show. So those are more valuable and you can charge more for them. But I struggled yeah. with how much is too much. I've got two in this month's runs of shows for Winfluence. But Chris, you're one of the podcasters on the Marketing Podcast Network. I send stuff for you guys to record and I drop that in dynamically. But where's the limit? How many in-show host read ads are too many? Well, that's such a good question. I think that's something that podcasters struggle with all the time. And my rule of thumb is one for every 15 to 20 minutes of your show. Okay. Right. So I think if you have a show that's like 40 minutes... Having two in there isn't bad, three at the most. But if you have four in a 40-minute show, that means every 10 minutes your audience hears an ad. And for most listeners, they're going to be kind of turned off by that. you know. And I don't think that many podcasters, I think the live reads you're talking about, I think that's a skill. Yeah. For me personally, I practice it. And if I want to put it in the show, I'm going to practice the script. I'm going to even practice my examples I'm putting into it because it sounds more natural and it flows better with the content. So I do think they're more valuable. I agree with you there. 
I think every 15 to 20 minutes is good to have one. I would say if your show goes past five, you got to have one of those like two hour shows that's on YouTube because then people don't notice. If they're watching on YouTube in this video, I think you, you've yeah. won there. And I also think there's a, in the future, and this is kind of one of my predictions that I have in podcasting. <laughs> I think this is a way podcast is going to be even more profitable. YouTube is putting a lot of effort into taking podcasting more seriously. We're going to come to a point where you can have audio sponsors and video sponsors, mm -hmm. where you can then take the video of your podcast and cut out the ads that you previously inserted that were audio and then have a whole new set for video. So now you can have four ads and another four. So now you have eight ads on one show because it's audio and visual. I think that's where we're going. I think I can see that in the next like year or two. Or you can charge more for the audio sponsor to also have a video ad in the show, right? And here's what, here's what I'm telling all of you potential podcasters out there, reading between the lines of what Chris said, learn how to edit video. You got to add the video because that's going to be a big deal. All the social networks are prioritizing video right now, whether or not podcasting continues to explode the way it has, video will. So we're going to have to become more proficient at that for sure. And just for the record on the advertising folks on the Marketing Podcast Network, we have a really nice blend, I think, of both ideas. The advertisers will give us a script, and then I have people like Chris read it for their in their voice with their personal flavor added in. And then I take that recording that goes into rotation into the kind of programmed media, which is dynamically dropped into each episode. I think it's a happy medium most of us seem pretty comfortable with. So if you ever want to advertise in the Marketing Podcast Network and have your message heard on 30 plus shows and have the hosts actually delivering that message. We can do that. So give me a, a shout on that. All right, let's move beyond the advertising mechanisms, Chris. Your podcast positions you as a thought leader as well. That can lead to consulting clients. That can lead to speaking engagements. That can lead to other opportunities to earn money because of your expertise. I would expect that you use your shows to attract clients, customers for your books and courses and so on and so forth. So it's not just about the advertising to monetize these things, right? Oh, not at all. I think product sales is where I've made the most money by far. Having different coaching programs, different courses. I think once you make a decision that you're going to launch a podcast and you have a business, you kind of want to have a list of certain products. And I think that's number one is a book. Even if it's just 100 pages, have some sort of book because it's just one of the easiest things to promote. You can mention in my book, I said this. In my book, I said that. And people will go and buy that book. If it's just 20 bucks, they're going to go and buy it. If it's $10 to download it, like that's going to bring in some nice revenue from you just mentioning it. Then I think you should have a masterclass. And I say a masterclass because it's shorter, number one. It's not as long as a course. Your audience is going to get the result they came for a lot faster. Like my clients that will get the first 1,000 subscriber masterclass, within a week, they have the outcome they want, right? They don't have to wait two months like a course because it's not as long. Number three, you charge a lower price. Now, I'm not saying you can't have higher ticket products, but if you have that $50 product, you'll be able to get a lot of customers like that. And those are the same people that are going to buy the full course. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're going to set up a product list, a product roadmap for your podcast as a business owner, you got the book. That's the first step. The masterclass is a second step, but that should be kind of a step 1A, right? And then your course answers the rest of their questions. So if I had a course to launch your podcast, right? The masterclass would be on a whole checklist on what equipment you need, how much it's going to cost, what software you should be using, all of that stuff. Then if you buy the full course, you get all the other stuff about how you can launch your show and make money from day one, how you can create a marketing plan. All of that stuff will be in the course. So it's a specific product kind of cadence you should have to where you can, again, make every episode profitable. It just becomes super easy. That's true. And I'm, I'm taking notes here, folks, because Chris and others have inspired me. I need, I, I know that I need a master class on influencer marketing. I need a course on influencer marketing. <laughs> I got some product things that I can do here. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting all this advice to good use here in the coming months, which will be great. All right. So let's say there's someone out there listening who wants to start a podcast, a creator who wants to kind of wade into these waters, or they have one and want to figure out how to make it better, what do you recommend they do? Where can they go and find your advice on the interwebs? Instagram or Twitter at Chris Podcasting. Check out the new website, microphonemoney.online. And that's where I'm adding all my episodes. You're able to find literally everything. I'm not one of the people that hides anything. I put it all out there. You know, I, I love the feedback and the conversation. 
And uh, if you want me to check out your show, please send it to me. I listen to like five to seven, sometimes even 10 new podcasts a day. I'm always listening to new shows, giving them reviews. I do podcast audits all the time. So again, just send me a show at Chris Podcasting, Instagram or Twitter, and get the book, The Business of Podcasting. I promise you, this is the one book that actually talks about how you can make money from your show. Believe me, I've read all the other ones. <laughs> they don't get into profitability as much as this one does. I promise you. I'm not saying that because I really, I'm just telling you, this is factually true. <laughs> well, the book and the podcast, The Business of Podcasting, are are worth your time. So Christopher Hines, the coach, Chris, find him on those places he mentioned. You can also get quick links to subscribe to either the personal branding playbook or the business of podcasting at marketingpodcasts.net. Go subscribe. It'll be worth your listening time each week. Chris, man, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate what you do, brother. Man, thank you for having me. Love, love, love the wisdom Chris shares. Definitely go connect with him. Such a smart guy. Microphonemoney.online is the website. He's also Chris Podcasting on Twitter and Instagram. He's also the Coach Chris, so he's not hard to find. You can find him everywhere. Christopher Hines, just search, you'll find him. Marketingpodcasts.net is an easy place to get to his shows as well as 30-plus other great shows on the Marketing Podcast Network. Real quick, folks, the fall is fast approaching, and that means conference season. For the first time in a while, I'm going to be back out on the road speaking about influence marketing at a few events. I'll share more about each of them in the upcoming episodes, but I want you to mark your calendars so you can plan to join me, won't you? Now, Content Marketing World is September 13th through the 16th in Cleveland, Ohio. I've spoken there before, but not for a few years, so I'm really excited to get back. You can go to contentmarketingworld.com, and if you use the code FALLS100, that's F-A-L-L-S-1-0-0. You'll get $100 off the ticket price to join me in Cleveland September 13th through the 16th at Content Marketing World. And not as relevant for obvious reasons here in a minute, but I'm also speaking September 7th through the 11th at the Society of American Travel Writers event in Bogota, Colombia. How about that? It'll be my first trip to South America and continent number four as a speaker. I'm excited for that as well. Yeah, I keep stats. I'm sorry. It's the vain kind of thing to do, but I do. If you are an SATW member or in the travel sector and want to be, come to Columbia with me. That'll be fun. You can always check the website at jasonfalls.com for more information about the events I'm speaking at. I normally include a call to action in the show notes, posts, and other articles there. In the meantime, help me spread the good word about the show, folks. Tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them. You can also help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using that recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. The show is produced by podcasting360.com and airs along the Marketing Podcast Network. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. Another great MPN podcast you'll enjoy is PR Talk, a show that digs into the modern side of public relations through interviews with thought leaders, authors, and the media on PR Talk with the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.com.